Hey, what's going on? This is Bobby Quarters. But this next one is uh, interesting, and I don't have to give any warning for it, because this is just a very strange and unsolved case. Hello, and welcome back. This story is of the Somerton Man. We're not going to talk about pedophiles again, are we? No, no, no. This one is pedophile-free, I promise. Now, he's called the Somerton Man because he doesn't have a name. See, the, this is a story about a corpse that was found in 1948 in Australia on Somerton Beach. There was a man found on the beach by some fellows riding horses. Great night out. And when they came back, the guy was still there. What's strange about it is they checked and he was dead. But he was in a fully pressed suit and polished shoes. No wallet, no ID. Okay, I take that back. It wasn't a great night out. Fingerprints didn't show up in any registry or they were unrecognizable. Originally, it was thought to be a poisoning, but after an autopsy were to reveal no trace of any poison or anything in his body. The only thing that they found in there was a pastry. All right. The other things the autopsy revealed is that he had a very enlarged spleen and internal bleeding from his liver and stomach. And all the labels from his clothes were removed. But without fingerprints or wallet or an ID and no real way to identify him, he just kind of became a John Doe. And later what they did is they just uh, removed all of his organs, uh, made a bust of his face just for scientific and research later, and buried him. Four months after all of this, the police found a hidden pocket sewn into his pants with a message from a Persian book of poems, Tom Sharad. Um, Tamam? Tamam? I'm probably not even saying that right. Definitely not. But this book that this part of this piece of paper in there was rolled up really nice and tight and just in this hidden pocket. It was from a Persian book of poems called the Rubiat. So eight months after the discovery of this uh, hidden pocket, uh, this man strolls right into the police station with the book, the Rubiat said uh, he parks his car out by the beach where the man was found. But eight months or so, he found this book in his back seat. In this book, on the last page, there was a poem, but there was a piece missing from the book about the size of that piece of paper that was found in the man's pocket. Also, on the other, on the back hardcover, it, there was written a series of uh, numbers and letters. Yeah, I'll show it to you. There was a handwritten phone number too. This led to the door of Jesse Thompson. Now, naturally, they want to bring her in for questioning. She denied knowing him at all. Never seen him before in my life. But she did almost faint when they showed the bust and a photo of the man, too. She didn't recognize him, but almost fainted. She also owned a copy of the Rubia, but the only one she ever had, she gave to this guy named Alex. It's been all checked out. No one ever really knew what happened or who this guy was. The mystery man on the beach. The oldest cold case. The oldest case, you say? I'm serious. Oh, yeah. They did notice, though, that uh, Jesse's kid uh, did have very similar features to the Summerton man, like, you know, ears and teeth. But there's more to get into. We'll get into it Friday. Says you.